Shalom, shalom, Yahshua Allah. I want to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rahak Kadash, Bishop the Pedro Hubertans, Queen Nazareth, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dope honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone. And shalom to you, sister, brothers, and ladies, truth. And shalom to the brothers and sisters that's listening and studying, show themselves approved. Shalom. Ooh, at 144. Call her law, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shah, Bashim, Rahak Kadash. So what we got before you, Yashra, is the U.S. Depth Clock. You can go right there on that site, usdepthclock.org, and you can see it, which is showing all the depth the U.S. is in. Now, why this is major news, why I'm pointing this out today, is that the U.S. has now reached its depth ceiling of $31 trillion. You can see now they're like $31.5, you know, they're $500 billion over it. You know, that's a huge number. Look at that number, man. How you getting that much debt? <laughs> you know, but as the lessons I talk about it, you're going to understand why they're in this debt. And this is all orchestrated and was all set up from the beginning. Because this is how the devil, using the elite, you know, your ish people, 1948, is going to get control to set up the MOTB system and why they would need to call that fulfill prophecy. So you can see the debt ceiling is raised up. And right now, all the talking heads are figuring out that they're going to put a band-aid on it, which is called raise the depth ceiling, or are they going to go ahead and just throw in the MOTB system and go ahead and collapse the dollar? Now, while the dollar collapse is very imminent, because I'm going to show you some of this depth clock, because I've been watching this since I came into knowing Great Millstone. I keep an eye on this. And I noticed some difference they've never done before, which could symbolize that the dollar is about to collapse, that, you know, starting to pass elders on down, been prophesying it's going to happen, because they had to collapse the dollar first, in order to institute the MOTB system. Now, as you look right here, dollar to oil ratio is zeroed out. And the dollar is prepped up by oil. It's all about oil. That's why they had to deal with the Saudis. That's why they go to war, take people's oil. It's all backed on the petrol dollar. So with that being zeroed out, I'm looking at that thinking like Esau's going to go ahead and, you know, throw up the MOTB system. He's done and putting a band-aid on the problem. Um, they're seeing that Yahweh Shah's coming back. They got a lot of their enemies in World War III starting to puff up at them. And I think they got to go ahead and make that move. And then further indications on that is when you look at the dollar to silver and to gold, they're both zeroed out as well. And those used to be the reserve to back up the dollar. The dollar used to be backed by the gold standard, used to be backed by the silver standard. And I think that they got took off the silver standard during, who was that? The President Nixon. Nixon took the dollar off the gold, off the silver standard. And I think somebody else took it off the gold before him. And so the dollar was backed by oil. So there's three things that backed the dollar that's been zeroed out right now. Which, I'm looking at that like they probably going to get ready to go ahead and collapse the dollar. So go ahead and get stuff in order, Yasharala, because it's coming soon. Like, they're the point, they're, they're the point of no return. Esau is being backed against the wall. Like I said, you got his enemies puffing up at him. They got war on the brink, and this devil, he's 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 on the, what you call that, having your back against the wall, being in a trick bag. Really, like, I'm going to title this lesson. He's he's in that thick clay. <laughs> he's in thick clay. So he's going to have to bust a move pretty soon. And we already know what that move is going to be. It's going to be martial law, dollar collapse, and he's going to institute the MOTB system, where he's going to mandatory the device to be put in every you know, man, woman, and child. And that's the in order to him to extend his rulership because his devil has lost his power. The sword is getting weak. His finesse game is, is weak. His, he's fully exposed. You got everyday people calling them Edomites. They're not calling them white people. So he he needed that veil to, and like I said, darkness, the lies don't dominate the planet Earth no more. Now the truth is dominating. And then with that truth being dominated, a lot of these other countries, brick nations, you know, gathered up their resources and they, they throwing out the dollar. Nobody's using a dollar. Esau, they fear his sword is no longer there. You know, the, the lies of them being superior is no longer there. So with that, when that happens, what happens? Your dollar get thrown out the window. Nobody want to use the dollar. All these other countries around the world don't want to use the dollar. They want to go back to gold and silver. You know, the, the standard. And Russia's using that. And they're using China. And they got a thing called BRICS nations where they are backed by gold. <laughs> so in the U.S., you know, they didn't got rid of most of all their gold. The, the, the ish people got it. So 
without the dollar being backed by gold anymore and it's not being the global reserve currency anymore, you know what that's, that's got to bring war. Because war is the only thing, the fear intimidation, the only thing they made people use was the dollar, was the sword. The sword, they're not intimidated by that sword no more. Other countries have gathered up their resources, got their nuclear situation together, and they, they banded up and they about to fight. You know, these, these Edomites that's in control now. The Western Edomites, your, your Babylonian Edomites. So I just wanted to pull that up to show you that, hey, get your stuff in order, get in the truth, get prayed up, because this could be the year of the MOTB. You know, and I'm just speaking as a man on that. But I'm just saying everything is in place. And looking at this stuff being zeroed out, <laughs> we're going to see what they do. We're going to see they're going to put another Band-Aid on it, or if not. Oh, another indication. I got told that a woman went and filed her taxes with H&R Block. And you know, like I know, Yashua, you file H&R Block, you get an advance. You get your taxes right then and there. They told her they can't do that this year because they might need that money for war. I'm like, What? That was mind-blowing, Yashra. I couldn't believe a tax agent told Eve, I can't give your money yet because I need it for war. These devils know they're about to go to war. So it's about to be game time. It's about to be game time. And then that's scary for Esau because let's get to our first precept. With that money and that dollar going down, because, you know, a lot of people base their lives around the almighty dollar on money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Like according to the scriptures and Esau's business society based on the dollar and the dollar right now is about to crash and fail and that's going to be very devastating to everybody that puts their value in the dollar see us in this truth we don't put our value to the dollar we just use money as a tool our value is our faith in Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah you know we, we kingdom minded over here so when the dollar crash that's going to build our faith we waiting on the dollar to crash but with people that live in this system and got their faith in the dollar bill, you know, put their, I'm worth $40 million. You know, all that little rhetoric. When this dollar crash, it's going to crash their, their whole existence, their life. They're going to be devastated. So I'm going to go to this right here. This is Isaiah 32 and 10. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, yea, careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. So there's no more increase coming to Babylon the Great. This place has nowhere to go but down. So the vintage, man, of Babylon the Great being, you know, having all the money, being the glory of all kingdoms, being so great, it's not, not great anymore. It's failing. This place is going downhill. And anybody with eyes can see it. And I like how the scripture said, yea, careless daughters, man. Yay, careless women. So, like, when they say yay, careless women, because who's going to feel it the hardest is going to be Edomite women. Because Israelite women have a chance to repent and get in this truth. So, they have, like, Israelite women have an opportunity to be saved. But Edomite women don't. Like, this is it for them. So, they're going to take it the hardest. Because they profited and lived good based on the wickedness of their men doing it. Based on what Edomite men did. So when this scene crashed, which I can see it in my job already, these women are feeling it hard and they're lashing out like Karens. And they're going to feel it, man, because it's it for them. So I like how they, the scripture said that careless women, because they, they whole faith is in their system, their dollar system, their military system, the sword. And both of those things are being crushed right now. And us, us Israelites, Yasharala, we are we excited in that, like, yes. You devils is finally about to get what y'all deserve. And it's exciting to watch them fall. Oh, it's exciting. I'm loving everything Yahweh Bashiach Shah is doing right now. Like, you know, our ancestors, they, even though we are our ancestors, but just strictly speaking, like, they would have gave anything to see this. Like, in the 1800s, you wouldn't see Esau falling off like this. He's at the peak of his power. You know, in the 1700s, he had our people in full bondage, Yokes of iron on their neck. Now this devil falling. <laughs> and we over here stable. Like, we getting ready for your fall. Because when you fall, Lord willing, we get that power. Hey, we about to give you what you deserve. So, we like some crouching lions right now. As I say, it's that, like that Steph Curry do that little wave down, calm down thing. Like, just wait for it, y'all. Sure, all the patience. Y'all Bashar's breaking them down. It's patience. We going to get our opportunity to get that get back. And it's coming 
very soon and they can feel it. Woo! I'm so ready. I'm so ready, Yasharala. So with that, let's get to some more precepts. One that's going to highlight what I'm going to title this lesson. Let's go to Habakkuk. Because these devils, they, they dollars done. And when they dollar go done, they have no choice but to interact the MOTB system. And before I get to this, let me elaborate on something else too. On how their dollar works. See, Esau's a fool. Esau's a fool. And I'm going to tell you why I say Esau's a fool. Their whole system is based on a depth system. And see, the lower level Edomites let the higher Edomites the ish 1948ers put them in a depth system way back in let's see when did that happen i got it on here they put them in a depth system and these lower edomites are just not realizing the folly of what they did you know what's gonna happen which they're gonna they're gonna gonna lash out the hardest these lower level edomites because they they don't have you know no place of repentance this is it for them so back in December 23rd, 1913, the Federal Reserve System got enacted. And the Federal Reserve is a private bank owned by the Ish people, the 1948ers. And what it is is that when the U.S. prints a dollar, they have to pay a dollar to the Ish people. So with that being said, but you knowing that, especially when your money is no longer backed by gold and silver, you know, precious metals, real tangible things. You'll always stay in debt. That's how they got to that $31 trillion. Every time the U.S. prints money, it goes in a debt to them because they have to pay the ish people. And that's how the ish people got control over this country, you know, a, a good strong foothold on it because they put them with thick clay, which goes in a debt. The Bible explains debt by being thick clay, and now they're laden with it. And now they're at a point where they have no choice but to just go ahead and, and forego their current currency and go digital. Which is going to put them in total slavery to the ish people. And to where, you know, it's going to be straight chaos. But they lost their country right then and there. 1913. And then it also lets me know why Black Wall Street had to be destroyed. Because if you are trying to dominate a country using an economic system, you can't let, you know, your, your prime enemy, the Israelites, have a thriving economic system. So for prophecy's sake, Black Wall Street had to be destroyed in order for Esau to be in a position to enact the MOTB system. Now everything is making sense to me. Now I understand why things happened the way they happened. It's all going according to the script, Yasharala. So Esau, when he did that, when he let these devils, the elite devils, the ish people, get a private bank in their country and they agreed to, you know, the federal, they got to pay the Federal Reserve to print out their own money, which is retarded. Read to, I can't believe they even let them do that. That's stupid. That's like me growing some crop in my backyard. You know, I take my hard time growing crop, cultivating it, and then when I get the yield, I got to give it to you. That's called getting pumped is what it is. They got pumped by their own kind. That's why you'll see, like, the KKK don't like the ish people because they know that's really the group of Edomites that really run it. And they took the country back in 1913. That's how you got up to $31 trillion. Because during Obama's run, he he did a lot of, he pumped a lot of money in the economy. Billions and billions of dollars. Trump, Biden, they just part pumping money, printing money. Every time they printed that money, they automatically go into debt. Because you have to pay the ish people. Each time you print a dollar, you owe them a dollar. <laughs> so you'll never get out of debt. So the only way they could have got out of there is they had to go to war with the ish people, but they served them. They're not going to do it. The ish people, they got them. It got him with a debt system. I got you laden with thick clay. Kind of like uh, uh, the issue right now, but like big time loan sharks. You know, the, the, the what to say, the, the debtor, the, the, the person that's getting the money is a servant to the person that's lending the money. That's why Esau didn't want us to have an economic system because they always want to be the ones. That's the part of the curses. They lend to us, but we don't lend to them. That's how you, because everything's based on, you know, economic power in this new modern day system. So they made sure they stayed on top. And now the U.S. is, you know, starting to see their folly. And they're going to have no choice but to go into a digital currency. They're going to throw away their old currency, which is the, the dollar bill. It's got to crash. It's no good anymore. you $31 trillion in the hole. You'll never get out of that in your current system. Only way to get out of that is they sever ties with the ish people, which 
I, man, they, they ish people got a hold on the lower level Edomites because they all Edomites and they're stupid. So back to the scriptures, and that's why they dumb because that that was a dumb move, very dumb move. I noticed they just do that to lower level people with, with house loans and mortgages. It's the same concept. You know, I, I hit you with the stroke of the pen. Like you think you're getting a good deal, then you look up on a deal. I own you now. I own what you have. So you're finished. So let's go to this. That's how them devils always react and do stuff. So this is Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yea, also because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man. Nobody's more proud than the Edomite. Neither keep him at home. They can't never stay in their own country. They gotta go to somebody else's country, take their stuff. Who enlarges his desire as hell. All Esau do is bring hell with him. And is as death. Everything Esau do goes to death. Every single thing he does is death. He is death. Esau's death. And cannot be satisfied, but garners up to him all nations and heap up to him all people. So that's going to be totally manifested when the MOTB roll out. Because Esau's desire, like the scripture just said, is to have control over all people. Not just, you know, the Israel. He want to control the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Hamites, even the, the other lowercase Edomites. They want to control all people. That's Esau's desire. And it's coming from your 1948s, your ish people. So here goes six. Shall not all these take up a prayer against him and a tainting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. I always take something that don't belong to them. That's why he's called the thief. Esau steals everything. How long unto him that laid himself with thick clay? Esau has laid himself with thick clay, which is death. Now he owes something. That's why Edomite can't sit here and tell me how good of a businessman they are and they this and they that. No, you're not. You a pathetic businessman. You really stupid. Only the reason you got everything is because you're I give him the props on this. You a thief and you a killer. I give you that. You wicked. You take everything. That's why you got everything. Because you, uh, Edom might destroy his own parents if he's given enough money. Because they are devoid of any type of morality. You know, they they were created to be the wicked. So only thing in their hearts is greed and gain. If you give them enough gain, they will do whatever. I had an Edomite tell me that He'll give his manhood up for enough money. He said that all men have a price. And I told him, bullshit. Edomite men have a price because they don't stand on anything. They don't have any morals, any conviction. They don't have any goodness in them. Their heart is not like that. It's not, they're not tailored like that. They don't save things. The description we read earlier, they're like death. They love to destroy things, pervert things, take things. That's Esau's nature. With the scripture saying they, they're at their peak now. So now it's for Esau to be done away with because their wickedness is so profound now that it dang near destroyed the planet Earth. There's a scripture that say that if you know if if it continue, all flesh would be destroyed. Because why? Because Esau is synonymous with death. So therefore Esau has to be put down and put away with. And it's coming up real soon. That's why the MOTB system is a desperation in order to stay in power. Because he got all this thick clay, this debt. Now he realizes, you know, low level even realize we done messed our dollar up. So now they're going to have to go to the ish people and get a new currency, which is going to be a crypto digital currency, and it's going to come with that device that's about to roll out next. And here goes seven. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake, that shall vex thee, and that shall be for booties unto them? Ooh, they know what that's talking about. Come back, pay back. The world is now rising up against Esau. And you can see that. Moab is getting angry. Ham is getting angry, which is your Africans. Moab is your Chinese. Amon is going to get angry. They're acting like they with him, but they're going to side with Moab, which Amon goes to Japanese. Um, you got who, who else is mad at them? Then, oh, Ishmael. They did that war in the Middle East, um, ripping up Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq. Ishmael is angry. That's why the Saudis have sided with the Russians. So, the Babylonian Edomites are in trouble. Everybody's now about to rise up against you because that's primarily where the sword has been used. It's been Babylon the Great America. So they're about to rise up against you. And primarily us, the Israelites, you're going to be the booties, which goes in the spoils of war. Here so go eight. It's going to tell you why. It's going to have a cool two and eight. Because they have spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. 
because of men's blood and for the violence of the land and of the city and all that dwells there in. Did not just say that. So now you have a shot back up statements I made. Everybody's about to spoil them. In particular, the son, the, the children of Israel. Yashua, we're going to spoil them, man. Huh? We're about to get that payback. It's coming real soon. So let this devil put up his MOTB system. Let him do his last little gas. But in the end, what's going to happen? Man, Lord, when we get that spiritual power, we're about to hey, lay it on these devils. You know, and why? Because they spoiled many nations and the remnant of people. Men's blood, violence, taking, you know, land on belonging to them, things they did to the Native Americans, which is northern tribe, things they did to the Hispanics, which is the northern tribe, things they did to the southern tribes. That's why they about to, you know, get their judgment. So we're going nine. Woe to him that coveted an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high that he may be delivered from the power of evil. So that going to what I said. Esau, that convert, that mean greed. Esau takes everything. He sees something that he like, and you got it. He don't, you know, do business to get it. He takes it by force, by the sword. You know, bloodshed. That's how they got everything. They didn't get anything by being righteous and being diplomatic. No, they took it by wickedness, bloodshed. That's why now they have to be paid back in blood. You know, because, hey, that's going to be a, what, what's they call it? The, the Lord said that a false balance of abomination. He's about to balance it out. So they got all that, you know, beating us up, beating us down, having us in chains, being subjected. And guess what? It's going to be our turn in a minute because that's going to be a just balance, <laughs> you know? So we just got to be patient. I'm going to read 10 too. Habakkuk 2 and 10. That house consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul. So they didn't keep none of these laws in this book of this Bible. And all they did was cut many people off, you know, broken up families. Um, they dropped nuclear bombs on Moab, Hiroshima, and Nagasaki. You know, you can't forget about that. Like I said, they ran through Iraq, Afghanistan for what? Oil, poppy, poppy fields, you know, taking their resources. And they raped Africa of the resources, you know, tow ham up. And Ham, you know, Ham helped them put us in uh, slavery. And then what did Ham get? A kick in the butt, you know? Then, you know, they they really tore us up, the nation of Israel. I mean, they ran us up out of Israel. Um, they took everything from us and put us in actual slavery. Had us working their fields, broke our families up, you know, ravished our women. You know, men too, sure. You look at buck breaking, hung us, cut off, you know, feet if you ran from the plantation. Hey, man, Esau got a lot to pay for, and he's scared. And so his MOTB is like a shield to try to stop that payback from happening. <laughs> but it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And here go 11, Habakkuk 2 and 11. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the, the beam out of the timber shall answer it. And the 12, woe to him the bit of a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. That's what Esau did. He did that. He built the town with blood and established it by wickedness. You know, iniquity, which is sin upon sin. Straight wickedness. Esau did that. So Esau got to pay. And we in the season of his payback coming soon. And a big indicator of that is his 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 debt system, his money is, is mired with thick clay. The debt is too big. He can no longer continue with that type of debt. Now he has to do something about it. And we already know the next move is going to be the MOTB system, the device going out. And that's his last little move he's going to get. That's it. Then he's going to raise that sword up because he's going to have to be, he's going to have to, his finesse game is so over with that he's going to have to bring it in by the sword. And that's when the standard is going to be lifted. You know, that's when we really going to get free, Yasharala, is when the devil tries to attack the hopeful elect. That's when the power we have a shock is going to be manifest here on earth in a, in a major way. This is already here. It just ain't manifested in, you know, to where it's going to be, to where they're going to know that Yahweh runs it through his men. And I'm, we're going to leave off with that. I'm going to go get that. Because that's heavy for a lot of people that just come into the truth to believe that. Because a lot of 
your average Jake thinks the Esau gonna rule forever, and they think we'll never beat Esau. But the scriptures tell you that we will get vengeance on Esau. It tells you that. It tells you that right here in the Old Testament. This is Ezekiel 25 and 14. I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they should do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they should know my vengeance, said the Lord Yahweh. Bam, point blank, it tells you that. And see, when you read the scriptures, if you ate the whole roll, then you're going to understand the story. If the Rahakadash is dealing with you, you understand the whole layout, you understand how this thing is going to unfold. That's how I can sit here and tell the nation you know, the next move that's going to be in play based on what's happening in the world because I know prophecy. And so we're at the tail end of Esau's rulership. This devil is desperate because they know their precept like I know their precept. And Esau knows that he's about to get that vengeance laid on him from Yahweh Shah through who? What did it say? By the hand of my people Israel, the men of Yasharala, hey, because I can just feel it, man. I can feel it, y'all, Sharada. Like, I'm ready to get at Esau in a major, major way. Like, I just feel that righteous anger bubble up in me. And I just, I feel the same way Yahweh feel about Esau. I feel the same way King David feel about Esau. And it's, it's like, Lord willing, we get that spiritual power. We about to enact that. That, that prophecy right there we just read in Ezekiel 25, 14 will become a reality and Esau knows and it scares him he even put in that movie Emancipation with Will Smith when you heard that, that dude that used to chase down the slaves and, and get them he, he, he stated their biggest fear and I could see it every day when I'm at the plantation on the job they're afraid and they should be they should be because whoo what's in my spirit man to do to them yeah they I, I'm ready to you know, bring terror to Esau. I mean, rain terror on Esau. And so I'm looking at all the events that's happening. His depth system. I'm seeing him in trouble. And it's only increasing my faith, y'all, Sharala. Very increasing my faith. Because I'm like, oh, yeah. My enemy is about to fall into my hand real soon. And like the scripture said, I'm going to do according to how about Yashar's anger? Because he said he's mad at the wicked every day. He hates Esau. <laughs> he, he hates the ones he created, the Edomites. But he had to create them for prophecy's sake. You know, there has to be, we have to be in trouble in order to get delivered. You know, we got to be saved from something. What are we getting saved from? We're getting saved from our enemies. You know, we're getting saved from basically ourselves too, the sin. Because that's how our enemies got on top of us. Because we kept sinning. So as we get our act together, we get right. Yahweh is going to show mercy to us once again. And he's going to deliver us. And he's going to clean us up. That's why Yahweh Shah sacrificed himself. So that we can have the opportunity to do that. So we can get back in Yahweh's good graces. And then once we're back in Yahweh's good graces, he's going to give us that power. Once we got power, then we're going to, hey, we're going to get down on our enemies. We're going to get back in rulership. We're going to get our glory back. And it's coming real soon. This devil's on the clock. He got to make a move. And our, we already know what move he got to make. So we waiting on him. Like, go ahead and bust it. And I know what you got to do. Your dollar's messed up, devil. You messed it up. You're stupid. <laughs> you know? So, hey. We just got to keep the faith. And keep our patience, y'all, Charlotte. So with that, I hope this has been edifying. I'm going to stay on my watch. I'm going to keep an eye on every little thing. I see y'all, Charlotte, reporting it to you. So you know where we at in prophecy. So with that, I want to say, Kwame, y'all, Charlotte. Detail by Bob. Shalom.